for Food Smarts video series, Cooking with Spices. We've all got them, right? Various jars, bottles, and boxes of spices taking up real estate in our pantries. Spices and dried herbs are added to recipes all the time and with good reason. They give healthy flavor and culinary focus without adding a lot of salt or fat. In addition to making dishes taste delicious, they have great health benefits. They can reduce inflammation, lower blood sugar, relieve nausea, boost heart health, and even ease pain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cook with various spices and herbs to coax out all of that great flavor by using really simple methods. We'll saute them with aromatics to make a comforting vegan lentil soup. We'll use them as a savory rub for lean pork tenderloin and toss them with veggies and chicken for a really simple weeknight sheet pan dinner. So let's get started. Don't be scared, but we're going to take a peek inside my pantry. It's cool and dark, and this is where I like to store my spices, and I have them all organized alphabetically so I can see what I have. And I buy smaller boxes like this for spices that I may not use that often so that they don't go bad. And then for spices like cumin that I reach for all the time, I get a large jar so that way I have plenty of it to add to recipes throughout the week. First, Let's learn how to bloom spices and a little bit of olive oil to make a comforting Moroccan red lentil soup. So here I've got some aromatics, some ginger, garlic, and onion that I'm sauteing in a Dutch oven. And to that I'm going to add my spice mixture. So here we've got some curry powder, some cumin, and some chili flake. I like it a little spicy so I put a little bit extra in there. So what you want to do is put it into the Dutch oven and then using a wooden spoon, make sure that you're really stirring it to coat all of those great aromatics. And you'll see that the spices are starting to brown already on the bottom of the Dutch oven. So once it's had time to hang out, you can see it's starting to form like a, a little crust there on the bottom of the Dutch oven, and that's definitely what you want. You're toasting the spices to give great flavor. Then we're gonna add our red lentils. We've got one cup of red lentils here. And before I add any liquid, I really like to make sure that I'm stirring to coat everything and all of those great spices, make sure that the ginger, garlic, and onion are all incorporated. Then we're gonna add a can of crushed tomatoes, super simple pantry item. And then I like to rinse out the can to add my water to the lentil soup. Give it a good stir. And you'll see I wanna scrape up all those bits on the bottom, those spicy bits, to make sure that they're getting incorporated into the liquid. There, I'm adding my water. And this soup is really forgiving. If you see that it's starting to lose a lot of liquid and the lentils aren't quite to the right consistency yet, feel free to add a little bit more water if you want to. Really, really forgiving soup. All right, so now we're gonna add our coconut milk. I like to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that I'm getting all of the great coconut solids that are on the top. Give it a stir. And then you're just gonna let this simmer over a medium heat until the lentils are tender and the soup is the consistency that you want it. So here's our finished soup. Super comforting, really delicious. I like to sprinkle it with a little bit of cilantro. Sometimes I put toasted coconut, maybe a little bit of olive oil, a squeeze of lime juice just for a hit of bright acidity. Great weeknight meal, anytime. Now, let's see how to combine spices that you have in your pantry to make a savory rub. We're going to make cocoa chili rubbed pork tenderloin. All right, so let's start off with our spice rub. Here in a ramekin, I've got some cocoa powder, some brown sugar, uh, a little bit of cumin, and some kosher salt. So I'm gonna mix this all up with my hands uh, to make a really delicious rub. It's got a great mix of sweet and savory. All right, so I've rubbed my pork tenderloin. I've let it sit overnight in the fridge and I'm ready to cook it. I've got a large skillet here with some oil in it, some neutral oil and I'm going to put my rubbed tenderloin in there and make sure that I brown it on all sides. So you'll see when you flip it over there, you get that really great golden brown crust, and that's what you're looking for. 
Now we're not cooking it all the way through on the stove top. We're going to finish it in the oven, but you'll see that it's browned all over and that starts the cooking process. Make sure to seal in all those great juices. So off to a 450 degree oven it goes. And after about 15, 20 minutes, here's what you've got. Deeply caramelized, really delicious rub on the outside. Super tender pork tenderloin inside. Uh, about 145 degrees is what I cook it to. So this recipe is really simple. Again, great for a weeknight. You can serve it next to some cumin roasted sweet potatoes. It's great for the whole family. Next up, we'll use paprika to toss with some chunks of sweet potatoes and tender chicken thighs in this easy sheet pan dinner. All right, so next up, one of my favorite weeknight recipes, one pan dish. We've got some chicken thighs here, nice and tender. They have a great fat content, so they can really stand up to roasting in an oven. So I've got them here in an even layer. And then to my sheet pan, I'm gonna add some diced sweet potatoes. You can make them about one inch. You wanna make sure that they're just all right about the same size so they're finished at the same time. You don't want a smaller sweet potato burning before your chicken thighs are done or before the rest of the larger pieces are done. So same size. So to this pan, I'm gonna add a mix of paprika, garlic powder, and a little bit of kosher salt. So mix this all together in my hands and then sprinkle it over the top of the sheet pan. Literally just takes minutes to do. And then when I'm done doing that, I'm going to make sure that it's all rubbed together and incorporated. So we're gonna add a little bit of neutral oil, olive oil here. Drizzle it just again right over the sheet pan. And I like to use my hands to really get in there and massage in all of the spices and the salt just to make sure that everything's evenly coated. Um, I also like to make sure that I put the protein on one side and then the sweet potatoes on the other. If they're all scattered throughout and the sweet potatoes are done first, you'll have a harder time trying to pick through. So organized like this is my roasting method of choice. And then off to a 400 degree oven they go. You don't want to have the oven too high or else the sweet potatoes will burn. And see here you have just a really beautiful sheet pan dinner. You can transfer it over into a big platter, serve the chicken thighs next to the sweet potatoes. I usually like to sprinkle something on top so I usually go for some chopped parsley or cilantro and it comes to the table in just about 45 minutes. Thanks so much for watching. We hope this video has provided inspiration for you to dust off those bottles and boxes of spices in your pantry and get cooking. All of the recipes that we featured in today's video can be found on the FoodSmart platform under the recipe section.